Let's read Matthew 22. We start from 23. Matthew 22, Tabi Molao 23. They that say that there is no resurrection. And they ask him, say, Teacher, Moses said, if a man die, having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Now they were with us, seven brethren, and the first married, first married and deceased, and having no seed left with his wife unto his brother. In like manner, the second one also. And the third unto the seventh, and after them all, the woman died. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife shall whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. But Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as angels in heaven. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have you not read that which was spoken unto you by God, say, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And God is not the God of the, of the dead, but of the living. And when the multitudes heard it, they were astonished at his teaching. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, I was reading this, and I began to have some revelation I want to share with you. One of the best revelation is what was a reason behind their question? You could see that they wanted to prove other people wrong. Justify what they believe in. But the way Jesus answered them here, he showed them that they are on their own affairs which mean nothing on the other, other life. Not long I found that we are so busy with our affairs. Our prayers is to own something. Is to have something that even when we are gone, people will talk about it. And this was not supposed to be so. Here you could see that what is important is life after death. But let's write your souls are important or your soul is important. Your soul is important. We are focusing on who's going to own that one. Who's going to have that one? And forgetting that in the life to come, everybody will be independent. Jesus said, God is not God of the dead. In other words, there is no death. If you read Ezekiel 18 verse 4, you find God speaking saying, all the soul of a father and the soul of a child belongs to me. In other words, 
all souls will stand before God. Our affairs, they can make God to destroy our souls. If you read that verse, it says, all the souls belongs to me, but the souls that see will die. Let's take it back where Jesus was saying, God is not the God of the dead. And Ezekiel said, the soul that sin will die. This shows that it's God who will take decision on your soul. He won't look on what you were having. Your your money, money. Your, the people who were loving you. I mean, what you will get or what you are still going to get. I don't know if you're hearing that. We are focusing in our affairs that makes us to sin against God. And we forgot that our souls are so important. I don't know if you hear that. In Matthew 16, if you read 25 to 27, the Bible says, what can you give that can exchange their soul? What can you give in exchange? Can you just read verse 25? Verse 25? Yes. And 26? Yes. To 27. For whoever wishes to save his life in this world will eventually lose it through death. But whoever loses his life in this world for my sake will find it that is life with me for all eternity. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world, wealth, fame, success, but forfeit his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in glory and majesty of his father with his angels and then he will repay each one in accordance with what he has done okay let's go to that verse 26 read 26 man Arab verse 26 yes for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world wealth fame and success but for faith his soul or what will a man give in exchange to his soul? Do you understand that verse? That verse shows that the whole world cannot be exchanged to your soul. Your, your, soul, your soul is so expensive. Look here, you are coming to church other things. You are no longer coming to church for yourself. And those things are not the whole world. What can profit you if you have the whole world? All the people who are rich cannot own the whole world. They own some things in the world. Why today when we come to church, our focus is job, business why we don't focus in our soul why if you profit that job business, you profit your soul the Bible says Jesus is coming to judge Everyone according to what he has done. Bible, Jesus, what? That's what I told him to come. Oh, come, 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 come,
Our gospel of today is get this, get that, don't get this. Evangelia mamo takure khwetsa se o ska khwetsa se khwetsa se o ta and this makes sin to remain in church today. Because, because we are not addressing your soul. I don't know if you are hearing that. Your soul is becoming smaller than your job. Whereas the Bible says your soul is bigger than the whole Tell them about your soul cannot be exchanged with of anything. When I read this verse, I was very concerned about our preaching today. Because Today we are preaching to you how you can be rich. And this riches you cannot own the whole world. If you, if you look at that verse, it shows that the riches that we can have all over the if you can take America. The whole houses in America. Even the legs, Europe. Everywhere. and you own it still you are not even bigger you are not yet rich the riches must start in your soul tell me your riches must start in your soul hallelujah Amen. let's read the issue of what how Jesus was like in John 4. If you can read about John 4, you find Jesus, his focus was individual. The Bible says one time people heard that the Pharisees heard that he was baptizing many. He moved out and went to Samaria. Samaria. There in Samaria, he, the Bible says he was supposed to go using that road. Holy Spirit forced him to go there. And he went to Sychar. Look how Jesus sees the importance of one soul. And he found a woman who was sitting, who was, was coming to take water from there. Look how Jesus remained there when he was hungry and sent disciples away waiting for just one soul. The approach of Jesus in evangelism was, was not multitude was one soul. He knew that what will be done on one can bring thousands. Our focus today is multitude than one soul. And our ministry is based on what they have. We minister to take what they are holding. Take what they are holding. Not to change their souls. And this has affected the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it we were not supposed to be focusing on multitudes. All the people that Jesus taught them, they did mighty things when he sent them to one person. When Peter was forced to be in spirit and see a vision, he fainted. And he was sending to one person called Cornelius. When Ananias was praying in Damascus, he was sending to one person who was 
Saul by the time. When Philip moved up from Samaria from a big crusade, the Spirit of God took him to the desert to meet one man. We are failing to understand the approach of the ministry. And if we do that, we will value one soul. Will value one person as important. Our focus will be multitude. And to get from them. But our focus will be the soul to go to heaven. Ask somebody to say, hey. How far with your soul? And what are you doing about that? Let me show you another scripture. Maybe it will help us. Jesus said one day in Matthew 10. In verse 28. He said, you people. People are limited on but what they do to you. Whatever people do to you, they are limited. Can you read, can you read verse 28? Verse 28. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. But rather be afraid of him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Uh, read it again, Mama. Read it again. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Ah. But rather be afraid of him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are you sure we are afraid of God? Because if we can read here, you see the Bible says we are all limited. Ah, if people want to kill you, when they say you're no longer breathing, they leave you. Your life does not end in the body you are possessing. There's another life inside you. If we knew that our souls are so important, what man does on our flesh we won't mind about it. Do you know that even our prayers, even our fastings are focusing on what men can do. Man is having limitation. He ends on your body. Our prayers also ends in our bodies. The Bible says we must be afraid Bible of the one who can even kill you. So. This shows that after your body is dead, it's not over. I don't know how I can tell you this because you've been hearing a lot of teachings that have never helped your soul. You've been hearing... Oh, Still, you are failing in your flesh. I mean, you are so matured mature in the flesh, but in the spirit, you are zero. So much for cursing in the flesh. How to, 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 to become rich. How to can get healed. Jesus said, listen, be afraid of the one who can kill even your soul after you are killed by the Why our focus is what the man can do? Why our focus is in our flesh? Can you just ask your neighbor, why your focus is in your flesh? Therefore, it means that if your focus is in your flesh, you don't fear God. 
If your focus is in your flesh. Look what you are doing now. Check in your resolutions this year. Oh, it's flesh, 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 flesh. There's nothing that concerns your soul. And this makes us now that our focus now makes us to compete another. This is the time that when you look at your soul. You have to benefit more than in flesh. Let benefit more than in flesh. If you read 3 John 2. As you prosper in the spirit. Prosper in flesh. Not, not flesh first. When you, can you just read it mama? Let's read it. We listen to it. 3 John 2. John Waburaru Epistle Verse 2. Yesewa. Ere. Beloved, I pray that in every way you may succeed and prosper and be in good health physically, just as I know your soul prospers spiritual. For I was greatly pleased when some of the brothers came from time to time and testified to your faithfulness of the truth of the gospel message that is how you are walking in truth if you can read uh, John here you are saying I'm not praying for you spiritually I'm praying for the materials because your soul has prospered Seek the kingdom, all shall fall. Your soul first, all will fall. I, I think we have got a challenge here today. How do you value what you have received in sin? People know you are Christian, but deep down you know you are not. How do you value your activity in sin? Why our focus is activities? Why are we not dealing with a spiritual man? Why spiritual man? Why mutuanama? Why mutuasmoya? I say, why our focus is activities we need to do? Why relevant chikudukudu mishuma yari tamele ngoidira? And we are not dealing with our own soul. Most of the time we want to be busy. We want to be active. We want to be visible. We want to show off. But spiritually we are not existing. If we reach that level. Any action we take will mind about. I think. In the last day, one of the best questions that will judge us who are pastors will, will be this one. Especially a pastor like me will be who told you to make a church in Winnie Mandela? You know, that will be the first question. When they say, judge, they say, who told you to make a church in Win Mandela? The second question was, will be, what is the reason of having that church? Because now, the church is like a market now. People are dying there. Dying in sin. Automatically, if you die in church, I will say, I will pronounce and say, you, you, you went to heaven. Because if I don't say that, I will lose you. Because if I don't say that, I will lose you. The truth is, God is going by. I am not the one who is going to heaven. I am not the one who is going to heaven. I am not the one who is going to heaven. I am Focus now is the things of the world. You must be rich in spirit first. Blessed in, in your soul. Read Luke 16. If you read from verse 19. From verse 19. You see a man that was very rich. 
Just read them. Letla thola motho na go mile kudukudu. Now there was a certain rich man. There was a certain rich man. Okay? Who was habitually dressed? He had a habit. Okay? Dressed in expensive purple and fine linen. He wore all these expensive uh, clothes. And celebrated and lived joy, joyously in splendor every day. People were celebrating him. This man, I mean, uh, wore expensive things. And people were celebrating him. How can you judge a very expensive man? Being celebrated by people. Automatically, a celebrated person, if you kiss him, those who celebrate will fight you. But I carry on reading. Verse 20. Mm. And a poor man named Lazarus My was God. laid at his gate, covered with sores. There was a man that people were passing celebrating that one but they were passing this one. This, one. this is our problem concern our souls our focus is to celebrate those who are looking better and, and it leads us to judge other people and because our judgment now is on the appearance on the if you want to see that you have not made right with your soul look at your friends question yourself why you have those friends also you realize that your soul is not yet complete okay, read mama finishing he eagerly longed to eat the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Besides, even the dogs were coming and licking his sores. Mm. Now, it happened that the poor man died and his spirit was carried away by the angels to Abraham's bosom, like to paradise. And the rich man also died and was buried in Hades, the realm of the dead, being in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away and Lazarus in his bosom, paradise. Stop there, Baba. This is a great story. It's a lesson to all of us. Justifying ourselves by what we have does not make us better before God. Our achievements our progress they don't make us what we are supposed to be before God so if you can hear about this man uh, when I reach about this rich man I found Christians are becoming like this rich man we are trying to wear expensive things but we have got a dirty soul. We are so clean outside. But we have not even made anything with our character. There's this one who's dirty outside with sauce. This one who's no longer needed, no celebration. And the person was like, he was passed when they are going to the one who celebrates. Do you know what the Bible says he was at the gate? It means people pass him. You know, sometimes if you can check, you people, you are passing right people to people. Because many people by their receptions they already 
duped your, your souls. Even yourself, you are copying them. You want to be like them. But look when this rich man died. Can you just read, can you just read about this when he died? I want you to hear. When, yes. Now it happened that the poor man died. Yeah. And his spirit was carried away by the angels to Abraham's bosom. Stop there. The poor man died. That's what, that's what us. That's where, you know, what you can do is, to, is when someone died and now you people can bury the person. Your ability is to bury the person. Okay, carry on. The poor man died. What happened? He was it carried. He was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. Yes. And the rich man also died and was buried. Then in Hades, paying in torment, he looked up right. and so Stop there. The, the rich man died. He was buried. I'll tell you what the Bible says he was buried. Everybody <laughs> was just saying, yeah. He saw the coffin. It was a gold coffin. Uh, that, man, that man was buried. You, you saw the casket. Ah. You know, have you ever find that you people talk about burial of someone? And someone is in haste. Okay, look, we never even talk about the burial of this one Lazarus. You, you know, if you want to check, you find that that many, many funerals, I mean, that's why people are organizing themselves. Every month you pay this, you pay so that you will be buried. People will talk you. Will be buried. Ah, how do you? Worry about your burial. Why did you take your money? You eat it now. Have you ever met a corpse on the road? Everybody will be buried. Stop there. 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 Uh, where is it? And the rich man also died and was buried. Uh. Now in Hades, the realm of the dead being in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away and Lazarus in his bosom. But I stop there. I want to tell you something that you don't know. I will tell you this thing, but I'm not saying... Uh, I mean, you can go and find it, but I want to tell you. The way you are now, the way you dress like this, is the way you are in spirit. The way you are wearing your shirt, like the moment you die, you won't see the difference of death and life. You won't know whether you are dead or not. Many people who die, when they came out of their body, they say, ah. they say this, this is my body. This is my body. You, you can't see the difference. In the spirit, you are still wearing this shirt. You are wearing the same shoes. And you got the body. But there's another body here. The, this body that was robbing you is here. The real one of eternity now is I want to tell you that you must never think you will repent in the last minute. You, 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 the way you are, you'll be surprised even the day you die, you say, I want to repent in the last minute. You, you won't see the difference. 
when you are uh, you are like this when you are alive when you die is a continuation of the life you are living you are not prayerful don't ever think you pray too much you don't worship God don't ever think the moment you get out like this the senses that were blocked by the flesh become so much empty the reality of you become visible you must thank God of your flesh it's if you tame it now, you, you'll be able to overcome in spirit. I don't know if I can tell I you this. I don't know if I can tell you this. But, so the issue is, don't ever think you will know you were dead. This man, after he died, he just found himself in haze. He never saw himself falling ah, to the Because already though he was looking visibly good outside. Before God he was in hell. After you get out from your flesh here, here. The fire of hell won't wait when you reach there. It, it catches you from out there. I don't know if you are hearing me. Demons are around you already. They are taking you. You are screaming and you are You are, you are saying the name of Jesus. They clap you because when you say the name of Jesus, you don't say it from your heart. The name of Jesus is a noise to you. You are so you people, you must know that after death, your soul face judgment. Okay, read, Mama. There's life. Read. And it said, He looked up and saw Abraham far away mm. and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus so that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in severe agony in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things. Stop there. Your soul is all knowing. This man never lived by the time of Abraham. But the moment you look, you knew this Abraham. You see, if you don't teach your spirit to know now, you won't know later. For example, when Jesus appears in heaven when you are there, you will know this one. telling you. Without anybody telling you. So you see this man, the moment he looked up, ah, his eyes can see far. This was another continent. His eyes can see on another continent. He could see even Lazarus sitting on the bus of another continent. This is the man that he could not even see. And he never mind about Lazarus at the gate. He could just pass. He was celebrated. I'm sure if he, you know he was in Zulu, they were supposed to say, Hey, Skuta! Eh? Skuta! Even in Zulu, and he's working like this with bodyguards maybe. Everybody was praising him. If it was a Shangani, we're supposed to be saying what? Well, a rich person in Tonga, they say what? Well. 
É? É? Chifume. É? é? Gamula. Gamula. É. Gamula. And the Nigerian was supposed to be saying, a chief, a chief. Even in Nigeria, I don't know about the chief. A chief, a chief. When out Samaya, Uli Mutu. And he's walking like this. And when out about Samaya, Uli Mutu. And he passed Lazarus. Ufata wa fita Lazar. I'm quite sure others who are around him. Kian Nahan or Baba Balimo. They used to walk on top of Lazarus. Never Samaya would you want Lazar. And himself, chief was throwing money. And a chief na half a chalet. We're just doing like the chief. Nala tela chile tebari chief ai fufisa. Fighting. Batu balwa na urebai tope. Now this is the same chief. Ya no ki chief ya na ye la rabule langa ye. When you look up, you see he's in torment. Ah, level la utolori ya na umudu chibu choko. You know life here is useless here. Bo pilo mama le fasinga bona mukola bana bish. What are crying for? Nto wi lela. Even the people who are dead, they cry for. Leba tu ba huileng ba ya lela. This you are not a new person here. Even the style you are doing is not new. Whatever you are doing is not. It has been done by someone. But there is eternity. You decide where you want to spend your time. You decide where you want to spend your time. You decide where you want to spend your time. Where you want to spend your eternity. You decide where you want to spend your time. You decide where you want to spend your eternity. You decide where you want to spend your eternity. Not long I I felt I want to teach. I mean the raw truth. Without any favor. If, if I have not started, I'm going to do it. Because our people now, they cry for cars. They get cars, they get accident and accident. They cry for marriages, marriages HIV, HIV problems, HIV, whatever. There's too much fella. problems. But you are crying for bring death. I don't know if you hear me. You are, are, are crying to get something very soon. So if you are blessed with the car, people come with the guns to take back. You are not safe. You are not safe. You are not safe. You are not safe. What is important now is your soul. Tell me what is important is your soul. What is your friend saying? When he comes to you, is he adding to your soul or subtracting? You must check their friends that devil will use against you. So that you spend your life in hell. This rich man was encouraged by people around him. They praise him. He wear expensive shoes. Suits. Purple. Expensive one. Gushi. And, and all those things. I mean, uh, another thing is what which is expensive. Those Gushi and uh, what? Let me hear other things. Huh? Oh, Visage. Lasani. Uh -uh. What? Visage. Visage. Uh. Uh, visage. Yeah. Yeah, visage. Visage. And those things are the ones that are making you to sin now. And the chow kitchen chow to the nari sinye. The visage. The visage che. The gushis. The gushis che. They are the ones that makes you people to praise you. Kitchen chow to the chow to the and you forget one day there will be issues of death. I'm not saying don't buy there. I'm saying though you have there, your soul is, is must be important. I don't know if you're hearing me. Can you tell anybody? You can have there, but also be clean in your soul. Many of us today in the church, our churches are very much dirty. 
people are in flesh. Let me just leave and show you the scripture we read. 1 Peter 2, 11 to 12. Petro. Wamatomo 2, 11 to 12. I'll read some scriptures and we close. Read. Petro Wamatomo 2, verse 11 to 12. 11 of it, 12. It says, Beloved, Beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers in this world. Listen to that. I urge you as aliens and strangers in this world. Huh? To abstain from sensual edges. To abstain. Those dishonorable desires. Dishonorable desires. That wage war against the soul. Oh my God. Okay. Keep your behavior excellent among the unsaved Gentiles. Mm. Conduct yourself honorably with graciousness mm. and integrity. Mm. So that for whatever reason they may slander you as evildoers, yet by observing your good deeds, they may instead come to glorify God in the day of visitation when he looks upon them with mercy. Mama, read that verse. It's very powerful, that verse. Read it again from 11 to 12. Okay, from 11. Yes. Beloved. Beloved. I urge you as aliens and strangers in this world. Listen to this. Here, you could hear the Bible says, it was Peter speaking. Ke Petro Abolela? Baratiwa. He said, beloved. Barbafunwa. Baratiwa, beloved. Even if I to, bane, na di visa ka shusha shama. Ke ali rape la evang batu. But in Chang I urge you as aliens to leave the things of the world. But Dovani Abe Nibeba Tubane Nisa Nibona Nichinga and Nichiri Kuchiri Equa Hava Batuareva. And again, abstain from the sensual edges of these people. Ibaniba Tubane Musbatu Nerevere Babonori, Bewa and Niba Apapit. Be people that when people look at you, they found like you are not people of this world. Have you ever found that people say, the way you are living Christianity, it's like, it's different. Abstain. And be like, I mean, a foreigner. You know, if you can read about Isaac, what proves that Isaac was a foreigner was, he plowed, by the time of winter. You understand that? He was different with them. By the, time, by the time when they said they are waiting to plow, by the time of plowing, he plowed in winter time. And then when now he plow, he harvests. And everybody knew this man is not from here. There have to be a difference when people look at you. They say, No, you are not from here. The Bible says, even if they can go to a point of speaking bad about you, they will praise God by the day of visitation. But right, to me, Shamodi Makata just read again. Just read again. Arribali Ngabe. Beloved, yeah. I urge you as aliens and strangers in this world uh -huh. to abstain from the central edges, those dishonorable desires yes. that wage war against the soul. Keep your behavior excellent among the unsaved Gentiles. Mm. Conduct yourself honorably with graciousness and integrity mm. so that for whatever reason they may slander you as evildoers yet by observing your good deeds they may instead come to glorify God in the day of visitation so there will be a day of visitation they can but slander you by the, way, by the way you are maintaining yourself they will slander you Conduct yourself in a manner. 
that God wants you to be. They will slander you. But, but God will visit you. What I'm happy about is there will be a day of God's visitation. No matter what you are facing, no matter what you are going through. If you conduct yourself in a manner, don't ever think they won't accuse you or lie against you. But they praise God by the day of what? Of visitation. There's a seed time. There's a harvest time. When you do that, you are, you, you are, you are sowing a seed. Building up your character. There will be a time where you will harvest. I don't know if you are hearing me. I don't know if you are hearing me. I see you harvesting this year. Your amen is very weak. I see you harvesting this year. Our character is important. It's very, very important. How do you become very angry so quick? When you forget you are a Christian. Abstain. Don't be like these people of the world. When people slander you, one day they will know that they've wasted your, their energy because God will visit you. There will be a time when God will visit you. I don't know if you're hearing me. God will never wait for God to visit us in the last day. He, he can visit us today. Any Christian, I will say this to you, but you must know. I mean, any person who has got Christ, he or she rose are not better. Challenges, problems, sickness, attacks, Sometimes God allows it to prove certain wrong. There will be a day of visitation. The reason why you have to go through this is because God wants to visit you. Sometimes you know how God works in, in a different region. I went to Spain. Spain. And then uh, the first thing that challenged me was one brothers were coming and I was about to enter a car. They greeted me, they said, Hola. Hola. I said, Hola. I said, Hola. I Hola. I look at them. I didn't answer them. So this other one stopped. He said, Hola. Hola. Oh. 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 I said, okay. okay. I went away. When I was entering the car, I said, I saw some tortoises here. They say, Ola. Oh, no, no, they say, how are you? How are you? It's Ola. So I can't respond and say, Ola, too. I'm different with them. So they could see I could not understand their language. So we went to another shop we were buying. In Spain, they respect line. I don't respect line. So when they were making this big line, and I just went straight to the counter. I'm hearing them speak. And I put things there. That man said, I took money, I gave him. And I 
and I show him the price. Um, the price. He beat the machine. <laughs> and we went out. I asked my brother, what <laughs> was the problem? He says, no, they realize you can't hear them. But that's why they leave you. That's why they leave you. Can I tell you this? Is how we need to live here. If we live here, not hearing them, our prayers will be different. We need to abstain and become different from them. They will know that we can't hear them. They we are foreigners. We are new creations. We are different from them. I don't know if you are hearing me. If you conform with them, they can defeat you. I don't know if you are hearing me. Let's read the last scripture of Romans. Romans 7 19 to 20. But Roma 7, 19, Paul was speaking here. For the good that I want to do, I do not do. But I practice the very evil that I do not want. But if I am doing the very thing I do not want to do, I am no longer the one doing it. That is, it is not me that acts, but the sin, nature of sin, which lives in me. Listen to this. Your soul attracts every voice. I want to tell you about your soul. Your soul becomes so much excited when there's a voice. So now that voice that is connected with the soul it affects your soul affect in a, another way. Either positively or negatively. When Jesus was speaking about our soul, he spoke about a land with a seed. And when you sow a seed, that seed will germinate but it will grow according to the soil. So our soil, soil is as good as our soul. soul. Our soul is a soil to us. So now when everywhere enters our soul through our ear and enter is called faith. When it comes here, that voice, how our soul receives, it also makes, uh, I mean, our nature around the, the body to be affected. The life you will live around is because of the, the voice you have received in your soul. The character you show it goes by the voice you have received. That voice, it becomes a word. The word is a living thing. If you, are, you receive the word in your soul, when your soul is clean with God, that word becomes a voice of God from your soul. When you speak, it's no longer you speaking. It's God speaking. I don't know if you're hearing me. So many of us, we have received many things and it has affected our character. When we want to do what is right, we do what is wrong. Even if we know this thing is wrong, we do it. Why? Because our soul is contaminated. contaminated. There are some things that we have received in us. And it has affected our soul. Now, all those things we speak, they can be blocked by what we have received. I don't know if you are hearing that. As somebody says, what is it you think might have 
affected your soul so negatively. Now, Today you can you confess it out. And become free. Prayer with Apostle J.B. Makananisa. Touch your screen now.